Father, we worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, oh Lord. We give you all the glory. All the glory.
Pastor Online Ka Ola Yorichu. That day you are welcome. And again, when mommy was here, as at that time, this person has not become pastor. He is just a worker. Eh? But anything you do, and uh, Pastor Mike is not there, uh, that thing has not started. But really he arrived, oh, he will steer the program. So we want to welcome, we want to recognize him tonight, Pastor Mike Uwoko. He's the Zona Pastor, Aduna Parish, Aduna Zona Headquarter. You are welcome. God bless you in the name of Jesus. So if you have the program, uh, we are going to item number two. Every other important uh, guest, we will recognize them together when the time comes. But again, Again, on the high table, I have Reverend Oya Toko in our midst. Daddy, you are welcome. God bless you in the name of Jesus. So quickly, we are going to item number two, number three. That is the first hymn. Hymn number 170, Jesus lives that tomorrow now. So after the choir will lead us, thereafter we are going to have the first Bible reading. The first Bible reading is going to be taken by Mrs. Mutupe Atewale. So please, if you are in our midst, be getting ready to take the first Bible reading. God bless us in Jesus' name. Choir, please.
second hymn for today's service and it says Jerusalem on I. My song the city is my home whenever I die the center of my place shall we rise on our feet. It's still on the first page in our pamphlets Jerusalem on I. Thank you. 
If 
Christ is not real, if your faith is vain, they are yet in your sins. Then they also which are falling asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first put on them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ is the first fruit, afterwards they are Christ as his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, and even the Father when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till God put all enemies under his feet. The final verse. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. May God bless the reading of his word. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Well, item number seven, third hint in 812. There is a great day coming. Uh, during this session, we will not stand up. We will all sit down and we will take the lead. Uh, the current star will lead us. At the same time, the third Bible reading uh, will be taken by Barrister Sir? Miss. <laughs> You allow me, let me complete this up. Don't worry. I know where you are going. But you know the end will also expose you. Uh -huh. So, okay. <laughs> so that they will not charge me to court. <laughs> Mr. Olukayoti, uh, M.A. Eton, S.A.N., is going to take the third Bible reading. So, uh, when we are taking the third hymn, please don't and up, we will take it uh, while it's seated. And at the same time, after the third Bible reading, I don't know if there are special numbers. Are there people who want to take special number or to give us special numbers? Daddy? Are there anybody who want to write that special number? Okay, so in the absence of that, uh, we'll be combining uh, testimony and special numbers together. Uh, please, when you are being called upon to give accounts of life well spent concerning mommy, just go straight to the point. Like people like us, we'll just tell you what mommy did. Uh, okay, when the time come, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Fire, please. Thank you. 
Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll be taking the third Bible reading, and it's taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 19. I'll be reading verse 6 to 9. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Write. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. May these words be real to us in our living in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Uh, please, we don't want to take but uh, there are some special people that joined us when the service was ongoing. Uh, it worked directly, in fact, let me see, they are the one that started Prince of Peace together with Mama. I have in our midst today Pastor Paul Pelo. You're welcome. And again, in our means too, is our pastor. I am you the back, eh? I am you the back, eh? What happened to your own? Ah, and then woman. You know, if you go to the lady, you will put a dead book book around. You know how to do their own things, eh? So, he's, he was one of the parish pastors that are passed through Prince of Prince Parish. Uh, and it's the one that organized this uh, that beautiful setup for our youth this evening. Pastor Adeshina. Sheon Adeshina. I won't say that. Uh, Daddy has given me five names of people that will give testimony about mommy. Uh, you will permit me to, to add Pastor Belo and uh, Pastor Idowu Ipese. And at the same time, Pastor Sunday Ajala. So these three people will join. Praise the Lord, so that we can have a complete program. That is the reason why you can see our essay and coming around to come and say, no, this thing must be done like this, so that uh, there is any matter in court. I will not be sent anywhere. I say, I'm not here. Oh, the problem, eh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Yeah. This is a celebration of life now. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not here to mourn. No, laugh if you want to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. So, uh, item number nine. Uh, at the end of the testimony of the goodwill concerning our late mommy, uh, 
Mrs. Ennington will be coming up to give us a special number. But that is after the testimony so that we can wrap everything up. So permit me to invite Uncle Leki into our midst this evening. Leki Odu, Odu Tola. Is that in our midst? Praise the Lord. That is the only MP, that is the head of the family. Give him the better round of applause. Very few 
houses, there were no gold money. There were no taxes in this time of Lagos. Now, every little thing, people are jumping on Mokada. So, she will walk from, I think, the river that is to her school. She took the teaching job seriously. She was committed. She did the job and did it very, very well. I know her for that. For discipline, you cannot beat her. At a point, I was living very close to him. You know, to Mr. and Mrs. Shoto and all the children. I was on the table shooting my baby at the video. And there is one of my sons who is watching this program right now in Canada. And as a baby will drop her, will drop in with her, who will go to her work. And it was in that house. They gave him the name, I think the Maru. <laughs> so it was in that house they gave her, they, they gave him that name. I can be my room. And I'll make a comment about this. Please, I'll make a comment about it. Now, as a Christian, she sat in the Methodist church very, very well. Ereko Methodist Church. Um, when she passed on, <coughs> there was the issue of final rights at Ereko Methodist Church. And I, I said no. She left Methodist Church for the Redeemed Church maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. So, who will know her at the recruitment of this church? I am a member, a committed member of the Methodist church. So, and I went to school in Nirepo. My primary school was in Nirepo. And then I mentioned to a few people, ah, that this is a show for pastor. Ah, we know her. You know, even though she's still coming to us, you know, she passed on, and then somebody said, ah, do you want to bring her for the last right here in the recruitment of this church? I said, no. But that came up because she served very well at the church. I don't know which society she belongs to. Because I went to school in the Government of this church. I was baptized in the Government of this church. I was going to the Government of this church all my life until we decided to build, no, to join them in Suruiri City Mission, the Methodist Church. That church was founded by, was started, not founded, was started by Late Reverend Amos Chuemo Shulani. And I said, let us go and join that church and build the church. City mission. So, and she came on three occasions. If we are had, when I was baptizing my children at City Mission, she was always there. Um, family harvest, when we invite her, she was in attendance. She really did very well in that area. If I have any issues with her, it's because she went to join the Redeemed Christian Church. <laughs> because she was born a Methodist. She was trained as a Methodist. And most of her productive years, until maybe she was 50, 60, when she joined the 
church. She was in the Methodist church. She served us very well. She led a good example for us. A committed Christian. If anything, it's because she left us. Omo Baba Jo Methodist. The father was Baba Jo Methodist. And then her own immediate senior sister was in the Ajo Methodist. I'm sure if she had stayed in the Methodist church, she would have been the Ajo Methodist church. But now, she joined the Methodist church. So, I thank God for her life. She was a good example to me. I knew her very well. And I thank God for her children. She did very well in training them. She was, for most of the time, a happy woman. She has her own issues, too. You know, she has her own issues. But she was a happy woman. And I thank God that within the I think I saw her in December. In January. In January. Yes. In January. January. I visited her regularly. In January. Six. I visited her. My middle brother came from the U.S. on holidays. He has not been in Nigeria in 15 years. And then he said, Oh, you know the glory of me. You know the glory of me. She was very happy to see us. She was ailing. I never said. Don't take me to Shagamu, your father's town. So, I, I did not change anything. And my brother, he's listening to me now in, At in Atlanta. He said, try to talk to them, to bury her among his sons. I told him, sorry, I'm not going to say that. In short, she was a family person. The extended family of Isoni. I'm not only a view, I reject that because I am Ubutola. Ubutola is my name from Shakamu. It's my mother who came from the Peru to marry my father in Shakamu. So I belong to Shakamu. But I will not say I don't know the family in the Peru. I associate with them a lot. Um, at this time, that auntie has gone. In fact, um, this ceremony is being watched in Australia. Far off in Australia at this moment because there are some people here. In Canada, in the US, 
and a whole lot of them in, the, uh, in London. So, on our people who are uh, if I go up, maybe I don't work. I need to let you know. Because Jesus only Opa Ibuku Ilegisoni. Everybody in that house or along me I feel Jesus. With a disappointment. My mother died at 91. Auntie is 93. Brother, Brother Peter was 90. Um, Brother Ibukule. And I know I'm going to be 95. Somebody was saying, You are still driving. I say, Yes, I drive myself. And I still go to work. <laughs> and I'm going to be like that. By the grace of God. Go work to to my shepherd. I really redeemed Christian church for what? What is that? What she that somebody was telling me what she called, what she foundation, what she called. This church that she can write volumes on it. That is part of the commitment that she imbibed from the Methodist Church. No, you be asking me. To be no enjoy no work. To be be one of the I know how enjoy you need to come. Jesus. So for the mule no church, I'm a one bit titi. Well, no, you go. Eh, alaga. Only, only she do like that because of PC. Don't worry about PC. That is it. Eh, it's only this time that we have to say something. And the tuba koju. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lo, lo, 
the next person. Let's jump on hands as you I am so glad that my father in heaven tells of his excellent greatness to me. Wonderful things in the Bible I read. This assures me that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. I didn't grow up with the Shontons family, but I joined them about 31 years ago. And by the grace of God, Grandma, as we called her, lest I forget, the song I just sang, that was Grandma's song every day in Ibadu. And you will see her, she'll be raising up her hand, she'll be laughing, she'll be jumping. And I didn't know that song. She asked me to sit by her side and be repeating the wordings of the song after her until I learnt it. Grandma was a child of, she's a child of God. I'm not going to use words. Grandma did not treat me like a daughter-in-law. She treated me as one of her daughters and that I cannot forget. When I joined the family, she said, Bola, when it over that by Jewel to say here. And that was it. Grandma was a very she was my mom. In the church, before people knew she was my mother-in-law, it took them a very long time. Like somebody has said, she was a disciplinarian. The fact that I'm a daughter-in-law does not mean she cannot discipline me. If I misbehave, she will. In fact, the way she will look at me, I mean, I will get whatever message she had in mind. Grandma was a giver. Grandma will not give you that that will not cost her something. She taught me how to give. Whenever she was coming to Ibadan, the things she would bring, I always had problem. You know, returning, trying to match what she brought to Ibadan. I will go to the market and I will buy, I will try and buy, you know, something she will appreciate and she will be laughing. She will say, Mama Muyo, I know you are, you want to make me happy, but don't bother that this is part of me. She was a gift. There is nothing grandma cannot give. She will come and she's bringing clothes, she's bringing food stuff. She's bringing dog food. She's bring, there is nothing she will not bring. And when I'm saying, Grandma, what is this again? Say, I don't want you to bother yourself. This is this, this is that, that this is that. Grandma was a, is a child of God. She taught me how to relate very well with people. And she will say, Ah, oh, God, I'm here, everybody. I mean, that was Grandma. And she will pray and pray and pray. She will come from Lagos. Come, the redemption camp is kilometer 46, very close to Lagos. She will come to Ibadan, the Oyan camp. Say, ah, Grandma, I'm, I'm, I'm a wa. She say, Oya, 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 Ati Baba, everybody. And the children will bear me witness. Anytime she came to Ibadan, we will fall in line. If any of the children or myself or even our daddy, if we, we were complacent, the moment she comes, she's speaking this, putting in the correct place, putting this, so everybody will, and we know we have to pray. 
and we will go to work, come back at night. You know, everybody tired, children tired, and grandma will sing this song. Grandma will be at home from morning till night, and when we get back to from work, just to call it Daale Mohe. So one day, one of the children said, Grandma, I don't sing that song this evening. We are all tired. So we are not going anything. Ah. Grandma said, Oh, mom, not don't song. And you know, she will be going down, coming up all of us. And one day, Daddy told her that, Mommy, I did change your ring. Hey, people go on your soon. They change this song. That is Grandma for you. She won't allow us to go to bed without praying. And the children's homework. Ah. The children know they cannot somersault again. They know they must do their own work whenever grandma was there. In fact, it was a relief for, for me. Grandma taught the children, you know, so many stories, things I never knew. Grandma would say, Yamu, yeah, come and sit down. You know, when I come from work tired, and then we start talking. At times when I'm so tired and feeling sleepy, I'll start using my phone to call my husband. But you need to come home and bail me out here. You know? That is grandma for you. But one thing I cannot forget about her is the attitude, the giving spirit in her. And actually, grandma saw Jesus before she saw death. Um, what happened in Ibadan on the 28th of February is still like a dream and a nightmare to me. When the Bible says, in a thing cool of an eye, we shall be changed. That was exactly what happened. We were talking to grandma. Talking, trying to laugh for her, and that was it. And you know, I when I shouted and called my husband, he said, he, I said it cannot be. So immediately he came, lifted her hand, felt her pulse, said, Leave her, she's gone. Said she cannot go. Now, 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 that's somebody I can see talking to. Now, now, now. Ah, she cannot go. I said, Leave her or let me look for doctor. No, 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 no. She must have fainted. That was what I thought, and that was it. How grandma went to be with the Lord, joyfully, singing all her heart's desire. She will say, "Eh, yamuyo, ele yimi ugodo shaju milo." Say koni shere lomu kujesu. Say kote mama gbadura funi ye. Ni camp. In the camp she will go. We will be where we are. In the, if you have been to the redemption camp, you will know that it's not easy to locate people. I shall saw pillar number there were for me, I'll be there. So one day I said, Grandma, how do you walk in this town? Because me, as young as I was and where I am, once I walk and I'm able to get a place to sit down, you can be sure I'll be very tired and I'll be feeling sleepy. I said, how do you navigate the whole of this camp? That was Grandma Nepa. The children called her. The children are going to miss her. The oranges, is it the oranges? Is it the pineapple? He said, the children, you must always give them food. See, Grandma told And you know, she will pack all those heavy, heavy things and come to our house. What about childbearing? You know, before I get back from the hospital, she would have prepared food. And she will come and stay with me even before the arrival of my mom. Grandma is a good person. And each time uh, my husband shouts at me, he will speak to him in Ijebu, thinking I don't understand Ijebu. <laughs> And you say, my mom, what for my show my body? You know, it's something like that. <laughs> and you know, the moment she says that, I tell you, say, Grandma has said, for my show my body. <laughs> Grandma was a loving group person. I thank God for her life. She, she will go to church with us. The elders from Ibadan, when they heard, they said they are coming. They said they are coming. She will go to church. She will, there was a time an elder said she wanted to put down 200 naira as offering. And grandma now gave her 1,000. Grandma said to daddy that daddy should give, him, give her 1,000. Daddy gave her and gave that person that this 200 naira is too small for God. After the service, the woman came to us and said, ah, mama, ye, ye. That, was, that was grandma, lovable person, a prayer warrior. She will mention the names of each of the children and the wives and the, everybody and the husband and the grandchildren. There's no grand grandchild that grandma does not know his or her date of birth. And on the birthday of each person, you can be sure grandma will come to pray and to wish us a happy birthday. I pray that grandma's soul will rest in peace. Amen. And uh, no sudden death will occur in the family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Sir.
Praise the Lord. Uh, permit me to invite Omotayo Onito.
Congratulations for this day. Good evening to everybody. You know, when I, whenever I attend ceremonies of this generation, grandma's generation, I mourn, albeit not like the unbelievers. And I'll tell you the reasons for mourning, because I'll continue to mourn for them. One, this is a generation that defines a relationship by four letter words, love. That was all defined everything. I have known grandma now for 64 years, perhaps more than any of my brothers and sisters here, because she was a teacher. And in those days, that was when you see your teacher, you run. Now, grandma was so respected where she taught that she was called one name among all of us. I was four years old then, but I remember vividly. She was called Mommy Ulubumi Shonton. And any time she's passing, I leave Aradile, she was living in Oyeroko. We run behind the doors and we say, come and see Mommy Ulubumi Shonton going. And that was her. She left an impression on us as children. Perhaps that was what attracted me to the family because actually I married her first daughter who unfortunately has gone to be the Lord some 25 years ago. So I know what I'm talking about. And I've been with the family since then. Now as a teacher, several of my cousins, uh, some of them will be here tomorrow, testified when I said that my is gone to how loving she was and how she took the education. The one thing that I know for sure was that there was a time we had a number of people when admission started to become very difficult. And there were a number of children around the area who will have some challenge with being admission into a tertiary institution. And drama will go from house to house, practically dragging these children to continue their education. She was so dedicated. And of course, when tragedy struck some 25 years ago, we know what we enjoyed from her. I've written tribute. I hope it is published in the book. Uh, well, uh, I want grandma, I do not begrudge you for celebrating our life. But for me, like I said, I want all be not like the unbeliever because we will never have this generation again. I know what is happening now. I'm a professor in the university. There is no such dedication like these teachers of those days give. Uh, my elder brother, my baby, sorry, has said most of these things. We know that things have changed. That was the period when Building up the child was a collective responsibility. This was why we sit there and we run and we say, Come and see Mommy Chunto, Mommy Lubum Chunto going there. And that was it. I will learn again because, yes, it's not that I'm only like the unbeliever. Even if the Bible does not speak of an eternal life, I see a striking resemblance of Ramana first in her daughter Lubumi and also in. Mrs. Adewali said again, my sister. So I know that she has not perished, that her life continues. But I mourn because there are several things I want to say to discuss with her, and I know I will never have that opportunity again. So I do not reproach you for celebrating the life of Mama. But for me, I will mourn when the occasion comes. All of me, not like the unbeliever, because I have a hope in love of everlasting. I thank you all for coming and we give all the glory for, uh, for what she has done. I wish that the rights of that generation will become something that this generation will emulate, but it's like it has eluded us. But I pray that one day this type of thing will return and we can go back to those glorious days when teachers were well respected because they dedicated themselves to duty. 
They didn't have to train us. We had that fear. These days, I was able to go to school to start with teacher. We couldn't think about it in my generation. When your teacher is coming, you run the other way. But that is the generation. That is the reason for my money. So I want to the passing away of your mom. All good, not like, like John Believer, because I know she will, we will meet her again. But I will mourn because I know the generation will leave it as the pathway from where we should be. I will mourn because I know there are so many things we can benefit from them, but we will never have the opportunity again. And the way this country is going, except we can bring back that generation, which is impossible. We might we never might be able to get a child again. No child is misbehaves. If a child comes on the street, everybody knows who's child it is. And if you misbehave, they will report you. They will listen to you if you remember the immediate discipline. But then they will also report you to your parents for a second discipline. I thank everybody for coming. Um, I thank you, my brothers and sisters, for giving me this opportunity to speak the little I know, because I probably have been now longer than many of you. Uh, because um, it's been 64 years. I remember very well that it's been 64 years. Incidentally, I was also baptized in the New Methodist Church. The same day that um, my wife, Dr. Olubi Mishoto, was born, that January 1, 1959, was the day I was baptized in the Methodist Church. What is the lamb? And thank you everybody for this opportunity. Praise the Lord. Uh, because of our time, I will invite uh, Mama Pastor. Uh, Daddy has talked about Mommy's lie when she went, she was with a mental case. But when she came to redeem, Mama too has his own pastor in our midst. And he will just, I told you, he's going to spend one minute. How he's going to wrap up everything is left for him because he's the one that has been holding me. And after him, uh, Mama's uh, son in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Who, who incidentally now became a pastor. <laughs> the two of them are in our midst tonight. Uh, permit me to welcome Pastor Ituru Ipisi. That's Mama's pastor. You can do it louder, higher, because we are celebrating. More, more, more. If it is just so you can enter here, you stand on your feet with it. My friend, clap for Jesus. Louder, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Stop giving your life, giving your life, giving your life, giving your life. You can have your seat. Uh, where will I start from? Because my friends are I'm a soul to my mom. And I'm also a warrior to her. When we came from the business uh, more than 30 years to establish the of peace, at the beginning it was a school fish. It was a school fish at the last summer. Primary school. How did it go? How did it go? How did it go? How did it go? Primary school, we had less school fish. From then, we moved to a school fish. We were here and now so hard to let go. I don't know why I want to challenge my mom will come, 10 o'clock, she will enter the church. 
There are times we are under a little bit of service. One, one. There was the other line. State powers. I mean, who? State. And I will tell you, man, don't disturb yourself. It is very small boys. It's a little bit of My mom says, you are coming in, and I will see my mom in the middle. From the VGD. So there are some priority if I mention to them that my mom is going to be with the Lord. Even they would love to be here. Because she will be at a different moment than her dimension and her emphasis with us. But when we call the one here, she will come home. Here, she will come. She loves the one here. And she trains me. You know, some people will come to the video. Come on, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, no. After the video, she will not say, it will be the same thing here. Oh, baby, no. I will call her this morning. However, I go to the house. She will not make it for me. I follow the day. Rise. Correct you. What do you say about it? Come on, doctor. There are no place for you. She loves the eyes. She loves the eyes. So she will not make it for me. She is the woman of the eyes. I give you to her on that one. There is no vision. There is no program. Then just like I come in and say, no, 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 no. I become. There was a day we were in the last time we were very rich. We now need to look for a home. We go and start to bring us. And I'm saying, Mama, you know, 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 she does not go there. She does not go there whether you carry her or not. I'm sure they will be informing them of the Jewish mommy's office. I doubt if you inform them. Because I know if you inform them from the Jewish house, they will say to be here. Because I know there was a particular time when the Jews came to the house. That time, they will be here. So if you have the money, they will be here. So I want to turn it off for a lot of years. She came for people, concern. She was like, she will come and say this in time. I said, so. We had no to give her. She was like, what do I have to do with you? And she said, no, no, no. I said, so. What do you do with your team? What do you do with your team? What do you do with your team? So I turn it off for a lot of years. She said, I can't say that. Give her a sign of hope. Maybe you will go through this. Walk us with me because I was not sure that I said. No problem. This class, no problem. She was humble, she was faithful, and she was very decent. She loves me, and I give you this God for that. So thank you for being like this. We will meet at the resurrection morning with Jesus. Thank you. I think we, for the old school, I don't know what they teach in school these days. Uh, with Paul there, I think there's something we do in English then. See, it's a summary. I mean, if I were to summarize all that I've been saying in two sentences, Mama was a child of God, and Mama was dedicated to God till her last breath. Can somebody clap for me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, there will be for testimony tomorrow. Because we go on and on, the time will not be sufficient for us. And uh, as I said, I can take it to the bank. And we are too close. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's time to hear the word of God. The word is not for Mama. She has done the same triumphant. But we have the same similitants. We still still have going to us. And by the grace of God, we shall be more than conquerors. More than overcomers. God has prepared the to, to to share the word with us. A man of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, is my leader. Sometimes I'm not angry at you.
that is why sometimes when we Christians observe a moment of silence for people that pass on, and uh, the leader we say may he soon rest in peace. We are saying, man, there is no, there is no problem. Say, man, but then I see that prayer as a belated prayer. It's belated because the soul that we rest in peace, honestly, must have ended the peace before he or she breathes the last. So when we start, stand up here, we talk during a wake we are not talking to the one that passed away, we are talking to ourselves. Because the one that is going to have problem again, it is only you that have problem. It is only me that have problem. And God will help us through in the name of Jesus Christ. I take my expectation on that topic, what is life? What is life? The text is James chapter 4, verse 13 to 15. James chapter 4, verse 13 to 15. Go to do. He has said, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there in here and buy and sell and get it. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a people that appears for a little time and then vanish, it vanishes away. For that he ought to see in the Lord we, we shall live and do this or that. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. The topic is a question. What is life? I, I thought that the dictionary will help me to answer the question. So I look into the dictionary, look at life. And I saw so many definitions among so many I put to the first is that life is a period between birth and death. Life is a period between birth and death. And the second dictionary definition of life is that life is a length of time of existence or function. Life is a length of time of existence or function. I saw that this two definition will not help me the way I wanted, so I resorted to searching the Bible more to find definition to life. According to the text that we read, the Bible describes life as a vapor. You see it coming, and before you know it, it's gone. And when you look at passages like Jude chapter 8 verse 9, Psalm 102 verse 11, Psalm 144 verse 4. I repeat, Job chapter 8 verse 9, Psalm 102 verse 11, Psalm 144 verse 4. In those passages of the scripture, you will see that life is described as nothing but a shadow. Life is a shadow. In fact, Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 12, made us to understand that life is vain. 
life is vain. I was attending a function one day, and somebody also described life. And I see the definition as relevant to the message of today. It's not life, it's like a burning candle. The starting of life is when you lit the candle, and the end of life is when the candle has fully melted and it evaporates away. So from a time the church put the first cry, the candle is already lit. You'll be enjoying it because it produces light. And then the length will be reducing by the time. And you'll be enjoying the light. You will know that this thing that is giving light is going. Is that how not the life of mama? Is that how what it looked like? Everybody that spoke about her was enjoying her at one level or the other. One level or the other. The one that we call her auntie, the one that we call her grandma, the one that we call her my mother. Everybody was enjoying this woman. But here in her we never knew that the candle is reducing by the day. It's reducing. Or the February, isn't it? When the candle finished burning, it melted and it evaporated. Because mommy is not the one that we are going to put in just uh, six by six by two and a half or by three. Uh, uh, Kish that we will use to bury her tomorrow. She's gone. gone. It's only the, the house she occupied, which is the body that we are going to commit to her tomorrow. So life is like a bonnet can, can do. do. So that is why I sympathize with people that take life from the wrong side. Because people took this life as if they own it, as if it can never happen. I hear people say, leave me, it's my life. I can use it the way I like. It's a matter of time. You will know that it's not your life. It's a borrowed property. And one way you must return it. Another thought about life is that life is that which we always assume that is going to be there, is plenty. You hear people say, I have my life, plenty life to live in front of me. I'm young, you know. But very soon, you will know that every birthday you celebrated, on it. It's not actually the birthday. You are celebrating how close you are to your grave, even if you are one year old child. Today's my birthday. Today's my birthday. I am one day younger. Be deceiving yourself. One day younger. It is closer to the grave than when. You were born. So, so assuming that life is plenty and lengthy is an error. It's not even supported by the Bible. Life is actually short. And life is a borrowed property which you will surely have to pay back. Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 27 is a witness to this. Hebrews 9, 27, the Bible says, And at us is appointed unto man once to die. After there is your judgment. That means one day I will die. 
one day they will also do Christian wicketing for me. me. And they will do it for uh, each of us one day anyway. anyway. It is a reality of life. All kinds of prayer will not take that away. You will live forever. Amen. Ah, be deceiving yourself. <laughs> the one who live in that prayer will live in the world forever. I give all of us here a generous more time to live, maybe. Just add 150 years to what the number of years you have now. So if I say you will live 150 years more, will you really say amen from your heart? Because if you live 150 plus today, 150 years of today, they will stone him on the street, not because he's smart, because every other younger people will think that he's using them to lengthen his years. So, so because hey, it is not, not just about life alone, but when, when this life, life is required of you and I, I there is an enhanced to the grief. grief. When, when we pass up, up, when we, we die, die, it is not if we die, die. it is a matter of when, when we die. die. Then the, the appointment, appointment is fulfilled. The, the appointment of death is not what, what you can postpone. It's not what, what you can shift. Some, Some people will deceive, deceive themselves, except especially in the culture I, 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 I come from, from Yoruba. That's what they call Bukudi. They say they are high it cannot come. come. That is it's just that your appointed time is not yet. When you come, I think they could say. So there is an appointment that we must all answer to one way. That means we need to take a question. The area of the living is very deep here on earth. And that is why Psalm 90, verse 12, Psalm 90, verse 12, the psalmist prayed the prayer that that teach us to number our days, that we will apply our heart unto the wisdom. How old are you now? How much years do you have yet in front of you? I want you to know that that is life will not continue forever. And the moment any of us breathe our last, we will appear before the judgment room someday. That is what you bother us. It's not as much of how long you live, but how well you live. It's not as much of how long you live, but what parts of those longevity, longevity that you use to serve your God. Because you take from God, and ultimately, it is the God you will return. Oh. Even those who live very long, no. Job see call those long years a few days. A few days in Job 14, verse 1. one. Job 14, verse 1. He said, a, a man that is born of woman is a few days. And those days are full of troubles. By what is quoted in the in the program Namali for 93 years, what the Bible is saying those 93 years are still few 
days. Why should they should say few, few days? A whole 93 years. years. Because, because when, when you compare 93 years to long eternity, it's not it. Even when you compare 93 years to go through one day, it's still less than one over ten. Because 93 years is not of 100. And one day with God is counted as a thousand. And no human being has been able to live up to God's own one day. The longest man that lived is no longer than 64 years. And that was Methuselah. No longer than 64 is still less than one day. So 93 is still an infant when we are going to talk about the way God comes in his own day. Therefore, we need to apply our hearts to wisdom. We need to think about how we are using the life that God gave to us. We need to think of how we are living. We need to think about the place we put God in the life that He has given to us. In Psalm 19, verse 10, Psalm 19, verse 10, when the psalmist was estimating the possible number of years that we may live, he said, it's 70. And if you have the grace of God, maybe 80. And at another place, he said, well, if you have extra, extra grace, 120 years. That is the much, brethren. Let's think about how we relate to God. For Mama, at least the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. The number of people that came out, they were not bright to come and talk to you about Mama. It is his work that is, it is a work that is living after her. It's not all about religion. It's about your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you breathe your last without salvation, sorry, no matter what people say about you, there is white room government to face. A life without Christ is a life of crisis. And that is why we should seek the Lord our God in the days of our youth, when the evil days are not come. The evil day is the day that we depart this world without Christ. May you never experience that evil day in the name of Jesus Christ. Why I was preparing for this short message, my mind went into two messages that were received by two people in the Bible. And I was trying to ask myself the question, if I were the one that received this message, what will I do? The first of the message was received by a king. And the message was delivered by somebody that could be regarded as the national prophet. And the story is found in Second King, chapter 20, verse 1, Second King, chapter 20, verse 1, and Isaiah, chapter 38, verse 1. Isaiah, chapter 38, verse 1. His name is Ezekiah. And the Bible says, in those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, 
Thus says the Lord, Lord. set thy, thy house in order, order. for thou shalt die, die and not, not live. live. Now, now, if you are if the one, one that is called Ezekiah, and that, and that message, message, this particular message, message comes to you tonight, what will be your reaction? Somebody will say, I banned you in Jesus' name. Hey, you are wasting your time. That is if the message is not from God, then you can ban and cast. Somebody will say, I recall the blood of Jesus. You are just wasting the blood because it will do nothing. If your reaction to a message like this is that ah, I will pray all through the night, then you need to take, check yourself. If your reaction is that, ah, I will quickly run to church to go and pray, it means you are not prepared. If your reaction is that, I will be singing, I will be doing this, I will do it, it's just a sign that you need to amend your life. A man that is ready, if this kind of message come, will not change his program. His normal program will continue. I'm saying this because the return of the Lord is going to be sudden. My mom may have period of preparation because of weakness of body when she was sick. But not, not every, every one, one of us, us we had that grace. It's a special grace. Anybody could pass on suddenly, and you cannot query God. The senior advocate of Nigeria is seated there in the front. I'm not sure that in, his, in all his law experience that he has been able to carry God to any court. Because if you carry God to court, who will be the judge? Praise the Lord. So the sign of panicking at the approach of death is a show that you are not prepared. And what it means is that you need to set your house in order. Don't always think about life alone. Think about where you will have to live this life. That if God will say, it is my turn to come home, am I ready? And the only thing that will make you not to be ready is if you have not made your way right with the Lord. That is all what being born again is about. Nobody is talking about religion here. You need to set through the case of your salvation. Why you are still alive because there is no adjustment in the days of death. No repentance in grave. No matter how good you may be to fellow human being, if he's short of you, asking Jesus as the Lord and Savior is not good enough. Because the Bible says, all oh, your righteousness, all oh, my righteousness are before God like a filthy rag. Think about your salvation. Think about where you will spend your eternity. Think about what happens next after you have breathed your last and settle your account with God. The second person, this one was pathetic. 
I tried try to, to place it, I could, I could not place it where well up to now. now. But because, because I'm a believer, believer I, I know that, that we have, have plenty of opportunity to ask questions question when, when we get, get to heaven. heaven. It's, it's all about the life of Moses. Moses, the great man of God. Moses, the great intercessor. Moses, the man that was described as the meekest man on earth. Moses, the man that saw God bodily, the back part of the Most High. God once announced that I will make you a God, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. That is how close Moses was to God. But then he made mistakes that God refused to pardon him. And then he was praying and praying and begging God, begging God all over and over again. Then I got to Deuteronomy chapter 3, chapter 32, verse 48 to 50. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 48 to 50. And the Lord spake unto Moses, that self same day, saying, Get ye all into the mountain Abraham, Abraham, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Cana, which I give unto the children of Israel for a, a possession. And, and look, look at, at this, this next statement. statement. And, and die in, in the mountain, whither thou goest, and be gathered unto thy people, people as Aaron thy brother, brother died, died in, in Mount Hall, and, and was gathered unto our people. When I saw this statement, go to mountain, see the land, and die. Uh -uh. This is too drastic. If you were Moses, what will you do? Ezekiah even had the time to say, Lord, remember how I have done this, how I have done that, how you have to do this. But Moses was never given that opportunity. If you study your Bible very well, you will get to know that in the course of praying that God should let him enter the land. At the point, God told Moses, say, Moses, speak to me no more concerning this matter. In other words, case close. You will die. If you see this or receive this kind of message, this time not from prophet. Not, not from, from pastor, pastor but from, from the most high himself. himself how will you take it for me maybe i will not go to that mountain i will run to another place like jonah and what cut off with jonah will have cut off with me where, Where can, can a man run from his maker? None of us can escape from God when our time comes. That is the summary of this message, and that is why it is important for you to prepare yourself and make your salvation real before you see death. Whether you are old or, long or, or young, if people are singing in your river, Ile lo lo tarara, Ile lo lo tarara, we need to begin to define the house. Which house? Oh, lole, truly, but which home? Please, let's think about our salvation. 
Let's not joke with the issue of repenting of all our sins because hands turn to hands, no sinner. We enter into the kingdom of heaven. Are you safe? Is your name in the book of life? If you die this evening, where will you spend your eternity? I'm not a prophet of doom. You will get to your house safely. But none of us knows the time we will live here. We didn't know the time we came. Only somebody told us maybe they wrote the date. This was the date you were born. And you will not know the time you will go. God at least made sure that he kept that secret away from us. You don't know the time you will go. You don't know how you will go. And so what is necessary for us is to make our way right before our maker. This will not cost us anything. It has nothing to do with the exchange rate of Naira to dollar. Nothing. It has nothing to do with the economy of any nation. No money is involved. But if it is something that is involved money now, we will do everything, including borrowing, to get it up. But because God, God as it were, make, make salvation free. free. That is not really free. It costs the life of Jesus. It costs the blood of Jesus. But the us is as, it's free. That is why we didn't value it. But when you know that none of us will live this life forever, then we will know the time to value the issue of salvation is now. God gave us counsel as I close now. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. He said, remember now. Not tomorrow. Not next year. Not when you are retired. He said, remember when, when? Now, now thy creator in the days of thy youth, why the evil days comes not, not, not the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. What will you do? with Jesus. Life has no meaning without Christ. Today is the day of your salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. Bow down your head. I don't know who God has sent me to, but uh, I want to give opportunity to those of us who are here this evening who have who not really not taken the decision to have a valid relationship with God. God. You are not born again. again. If you were the one that God talked to the way he sent message to Moses, the way he sent message to Ezekiah, you cannot beat your chest that you will end up in the bosom of the Lord. What it means is that you have to commit your life to the Lord. You have to be born again. So wherever you are seated, I'm not going to call you out. But naturally, if it is in the church, I will not even ask people to close their eyes before I will call you out. But for today, the grace is in the house. Wherever you are, you want to commit your life to Christ. You want to be born again. You want to be able to use the day of the week of Mama as a point of reference. Eleventh day 
of April 2024, I was found again. Please, just raise your hands and I will pray for you wherever you are. Just raise your hands. You want to be born again? Raise it up sufficiently so that I can see it wherever you are. It's getting dark. I'm not sure I'm seeing, but if you have raised your hands, even though I cannot be sure if I'm seeing any, just quietly pray this prayer after I can see one hand over there. God bless you. If you have raised your hand, just pray this prayer quietly after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for your work tonight. I know myself as a sinner. I have come to you to repent of my sin. Please come into my life, Lord Jesus, and be the Lord and Savior of my soul. The power not to go back to my sin again, please give me that power. Please write my name in the book of life. And from now on, I promise to serve you. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name I pray. And I pray for you now. Father, thank you because your children that raise their hands, they are not doing it unto the preacher. They are doing it unto you. I know you identify them. Please have mercy on them. Forgive their sins. Write their name in the book of life. The power to go and sin no more, give to them. And on the day that you will return, please let none of these people be left behind. Thank you, everlasting Father. And for all your children that have listened to this message tonight, Father, I pray that no aspect of this message will stand against us in judgment on the last day. If there be any that have not really turned their life over to you, let this message continue to prove their heart until they surrender their lives to you. Blessed be the name of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Lord, the only assignment that is left for me now is to pray for the immediate children of Mama and the family. So if they can just rise, the biological and the, the extended children of Mama, please be on your feet. Almighty God, we want to thank you. One thing that you have done that is so great for us is the fact that Mama said he doesn't want these people to go before him, before her, and you honor that prayer. Thank you so much, so much, so much for honoring that prayer. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for them today that your peace will rest upon each one of them in the name of Jesus. The aftermath of Mama will not spell doom for anybody in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord that make Mama to live up to 93 years, we also lend your peace on head. If Christ tarries in the mighty name of Jesus. But if the coming of Jesus Christ is sooner than later, none of you will be left behind on the day of rapture in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will keep you the Lord will sustain you. Whatever gap that Mama has left, the Lord will fill it up. In the name of Jesus, 
There shall be no calamity in the family. There shall be no premature death in the family. The Lord will defend you. The Lord will uphold you. The grace of God will sustain you. God will surround every one of you with the edge of fire in the name of Jesus. No arrow of the wicked will be able to penetrate you. The Lord will defend you. In the morning, it shall be well with you. In the night, it shall be well with you. The journey of life will not be made difficult for you. If Jesus delay is coming, every one of you will lead to your early years. And the day of your departure will be known for peace. None of you will depart this earth suddenly. None of you will depart this earth painfully. You shall continue to be well with you. God will stand by you. God will comfort you. It shall continue to be well with you. So shall it be. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are clapping for the man of God, that is too much. But I want you to clap for Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God in the life of Pastor J.T. Ashaolu. The pastor in charge of Lagos Project 26 of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Our prayer is that the grace and the anointing of God upon your life shall never run dry. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise ye the Lord. Shortly we shall be bringing this glorious celebration to a close. With closing prayer and benediction from the very reverend but before then, we want to give the following announcements. Please, let there be quiet. God bless you, let there be quiet. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, we'll be having the funeral service, or do I call it the farewell service, in our church here. Service commences at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is uh, GMT, not African time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. By 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., the service will start. I want to encourage every one of us to call. Like we said, we are not money. Uh, ask the statisticians the number of people that made 93 they are quite few in this generation so we were celebrating the life of mama and uh, I enjoy you please join us if you want to cross the 90 year to 90 something under a shot to big hallelujah I look forward to see you in the mighty name of Jesus. That will be the only announcement. God bless you as you call. The very Reverend Oya Dr. Sir. Let's clap for the man of God. Thank you very much. Let us rise as we close. The last thing this in Christ alone, the first and the last thing as we put our, put our trust in the Lord Jesus. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my sorrow. This corner stone, this solid ground, fell through the first drought and storm. In Christ alone, my hope is found. Yes.